Inside Science TV. Hurricane force winds can top 200 miles per hour. The rain can feel like nails hitting your skin. But hurricanes can also cause a huge rise in water levels called a storm surge. It can be devastating. Katrina, Ike, Sandy, these were not necessarily big wind events, but they were big storm surge events. More than 1,800 lives were lost when Katrina slammed into New Orleans. Water from the storm surge was measured almost 27 feet above normally dry ground. Katrina was certainly from a magnitude perspective, from a loss of life perspective, from a societal impact perspective, um, one of the worst storm surge events in modern history. In 2008, during Hurricane Ike, waters rose up to 20 feet above ground along parts of Texas, killing 94 and leaving behind almost $20 billion in property damage. And Sandy in 2012, a storm surge of over nine feet above normal slammed into the northeastern United States, claiming a total of 145 lives. If you look more broadly, historically, at the, the lives lost in hurricanes, roughly 50% or half occur from storm surge. The reason? The wind blows hard, a tree falls down, the roof comes off. It's easier for people to envision this, but it's very difficult for people to envision water, five, 10, 15 feet inundating entire communities. That's just beyond what the average person can understand or envision. That's why we need a simple and straightforward communication strategy that really says what we know is gonna happen in a storm. Meteorologists at the National Hurricane Center have developed a new warning system that informs people 36 to 48 hours in advance of a storm surge. For all other hazards, we have a warning. So we have tornado warnings for tornadoes, we have flash flood warnings for, for you know, heavy rain, we have hurricane warnings for wind in hurricanes. Now we need a storm surge warning to cover the threat uh, from ocean water flooding land. The threat of a storm surge and the severity of it is forecasted using tide stations. They measure the changes in the water level along the coast, calculating the wind speeds, taking into account the tide, the location of the storm, and the size and speed of the hurricane. Until now, communicating the threat of storm surge was hard to do. We used to use very, very technical language that required someone to be a bit of a storm surge expert to understand our forecast. Now we're shifting to much simpler ways to not only speak and talk about the phenomenon, but to show it in these maps. If you're in one of these colored areas, where the darker red in this case is a warning, the, the lighter orange there is a watch. Basically, if you're in the red area, we feel you're at a sufficient enough threat for life-threatening conditions that you need to take action. Forecasters will get a glimpse of the prototype this hurricane season. The idea is to begin a slow evolution towards a fully operational storm surge watch warning system by the 2017 hurricane system, would be, which would be the first of its kind here in the United States. A new way science is working to save lives when severe storms strike. This is Inside Science TV. Inside Science TV. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.